Hey everybody, it's Caden from Achievement Hunter with another episode of Coming Soon, and trust me, August game releases are robust. Let's hit the multi-platform releases first. On August 13th, the 1989 NES Classic is brought back to life. DuckTales Remastered for the PS3, PC, and Wii U launches. However, Xbox 360 gamers will have to wait until September to get their hands on the game. DuckTales Remastered features completely reworked graphics and music and an added plot as well as voice acting from the original DuckTales cast. Presented in 2.5D with background artwork done in conjunction with Disney staff to recreate a classic familiar style, Remastered is a blast from the past with tons of current-gen flair. Also on August 13th, Phineas and Ferb Quest for Cool Stuff for the Xbox 360, Wii U, Wii, DS, and 3DS is released. Based on the popular animated Disney series Phineas and Ferb, the Quest for Cool features two different game modes. The first is an exploration mode where you control Phineas and Ferb in a giant robot called the All-Terrain Transformatron Vehicle, and action mode where the game shifts towards infiltration missions playable only as Perry the Platypus in an effort to stop Doofenshmirtz's plans to take over the Tri-State area. Each mode plays differently and includes unique locations to explore and items to collect. Payday 2 releases for the 360, PS3, and PC on August 15th. While the core gameplay hasn't changed from the first installment, Payday 2 offers a plethora of new touches that push it over the top. Revamped gunplay, an added loot weight mechanic that encumbers the player the more they are carrying, and differentiating between cash and experience gives new layers of depth along with a huge array of character customization options. With a total of 30 heists to round out the campaign, Payday 2 is playable solo but meant to be enjoyed in a completely cooperative experience. So grab some buddies. On August 18th, planning to capitalize on the popularity of the Skylander series, Disney Infinity releases for the Xbox 360, PS3, Wii, Wii U, PC, and 3DS. Utilizing figurines and a portal, the toys are digitized into the game to be used as playable characters in either of the two main game modes. The first game mode is Playset, which, as it sounds, encompasses a particular story and certain set pieces to explore that particular Disney universe. On the other hand, the Toy Box mode is an open-world sandbox experience, allowing the player to use figurines from any universe to traverse the Infinity World in new and creative ways. Additionally, in Toy Box mode, you'll be able to create your own games and worlds. The infinite power of Disney is in your hands. August 20th brings us back to Slateport for another round of mischief in Saints Row 4 for the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. Over the top, insane, and non-stop action have been a staple for the Saints Row series for quite some time, but developers Deep Silver have taken things to a new level with the fourth installment. Becoming President of the United States, an alien invasion, a plethora of new guns and vehicles, superpowers, and a weapon that fires pure dubstep are just the tip of the iceberg in what's shaping up to be a more than worthy successor to the series. With some delays and tweaks based on initial fan reactions, the rebranded The Bureau XCOM Declassified releases on August 20th for the 360, PS3, and PC. Now a more tactical squad-based third-person shooter with elements from Enemy Unknown used to round out the XCOM experience, The Bureau has become a best-of-both-worlds game that will allow a variety of players to enjoy it. With the ability to issue commands to your squad and directly confront the alien menace yourself, the battles in The Bureau will be hectic and tense, especially for those trying to keep their team alive, as the usual XCOM permanent death returns in this game. The 20th gives us yet another returning series, this time it's Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist for the 360, PS3, PC, and Wii U. A direct sequel to Conviction, Blacklist puts you back in control of Sam Fisher who, at the urging of the President, has become the head of the new anti-terrorism squad known as Fourth Echelon. Nice original name there, guys. Blacklist's gameplay is still the stealth action you know and love, with a new addition called Killing in Motion that allows players to tag targets and take them out in rapid succession while running. 360 players will be able to use Kinect to play the game entirely, and will also be able to use the Kinect's microphone to distract enemies with actual sounds to leave them open to attacks. Wii U players, however, will be able to use a touchscreen to switch gadgets on the fly. Finally, the well-loved Spies vs. Mercs multiplayer mode returns. Tactical espionage action at its finest. The parody fighting game Dive Kick gets its PS3, Vita, and PC release on August 20th as well. Taking a humorous look at the fighting game genre and its community, Dive Kick is a two-button fighter that allows players to only jump and kick downwards. Health bars in Dive Kick are purely cosmetic, as a successful kick will one-hit KO every time. Though the game is simple and meant to be viewed as mostly silly, the fights are always hectic and fun. Final Fantasy XIV returns as A Realm Reborn for the PS3 and PC on August 27th. A PS4 version will be released sometime in the future with no solid release date as of yet. Canonically taking place after the end of the original Final Fantasy XIV, the escape of Bahamut had set off a cataclysm. The player is then transported five years into the future, which serves as the main setting for Reborn. Providing entirely reworked gameplay, a new graphics engine, better player interface, and most importantly, a better structure for the game's servers, A Realm Reborn promises to give players the true Final Fantasy XIV experience. 
Also on August 27th, we'll take another dip into the pool of madness that is Suda51's mind with Killer is Dead for the PS3 and Xbox 360. Cybernetically enhanced assassins in the future, aliens, dark energy that can revitalize and revive malevolent forces, along with over-the-top action, weapons, and bosses, Suda51's typical style and flair is coming back in full force. Main character Mondo prefers to use a sword in his main hand, however, his other arm is entirely cybernetic and can be changed into a variety of different weapons, including drills, a plethora of different guns, and tons of other crazy objects. Throughout the game, the player will be able to upgrade these secondary weapons, making them that much more deadly. However, if things get a little too crazy, Mondo can always just store up some blood energy and unleash an adrenaline rush attack that will instantly decapitate all targeted enemies. Wrought with delays throughout the year, on August 27th, we'll finally get Lost Planet 3 for the 360, PS3, and PC. Returning to its roots in both gameplay and setting, Lost Planet 3 is a prequel to the original, meaning that the planet of Eden 3 is now once again in a frosted state. An open world, co-op, and highlighted story quests alongside a plethora of side quests give this game a large amount of replayability. Yet another release for August 27th is Madden NFL 25 for the 360 and PS3, with releases on the Xbox One and PS4 coming later in the year. Madden 25 will be the first of four recently announced EA Sports titles to use the new, recently revealed Ignite game engine. With this year's Madden comes a series of updates including better graphics, real-time physics, running controls, and a more reactive environment. EA has made it known that the Xbox One and PS4 versions of the game would handle these new features better than their current-gen console counterparts, so for those wanting the best Madden experience, it may be better to wait. On August 28th for the 360 and PC, with a PS3 release later in the year, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows brings the well-known turtle team back into the limelight. Based mostly around the new Nickelodeon version of the Turtles, with some inspiration from the original designs from the comic, Out of the Shadows is a multiplayer 3D action brawler with style to spare. The game is meant to be played online with up to four players utilizing all the special skills of the Turtles, but can be played offline as well. Sadly, offline only allows two players at the same time. The final multi-platform game for August is released on the 30th and has been cursed with delays over the last few months. Painkiller Hell and Damnation will finally make its way to the Xbox 360 and PS3 this month. A remake of the 2004 shooter Painkiller, Hell and Damnation offers the same off-the-wall action-packed gameplay with enhanced physics, visuals, new guns, and added modes. With a discounted retail price and an abundance of content provided, Painkiller Hell and Damnation is not something to be overlooked. Multi-platform is done, and now it's time to hit the exclusives. Let's take a peek at Nintendo's lineup first. Cloudberry Kingdom was sneakily released at the end of July for the PS3, 360, and PC, and on August 1st, the Wii U will be getting it as well. Cloudberry Kingdom is a multiplayer platformer with an AI that periodically builds new levels from scratch, so no two playthroughs will ever be the same. Plus, it has Kevin Sorbo in it. Go, Hercules! The rest of the world has had it for weeks, but on August 4th, the US will finally be able to get its hands on Pikmin 3 for the Wii U. With the addition of Rock Pikmin and Pink Winged Pikmin, a competitive multiplayer mode called Bingo Mode, and the same amazing gameplay as previous games in the series, for Wii U owners, this is a must-have. Releasing a few days after its movie premiere, on August 6th, Disney's Planes comes out for the Wii U, Wii, 3DS, and DS. Taking place after the movie with a new storyline, tons of missions, and loads of different playable characters, Planes offers loads of fun for the whole family. It's time to get hooked on the brothers again because on August 11th, it's the release of Mario & Luigi Dream Team for the 3DS. Continuing the tradition of pixel art for the characters, but moving to fully 3D backgrounds, Dream Team is the first Mario & Luigi RPG series on the 3DS. Tons of new super moves, dream manipulation, and a brand new antagonist give Dream Team a ton of flair. Originally released last year and finally making its way to Nintendo consoles, the Angry Birds trilogy for the Wii and Wii U come out on August 13th. This trilogy compilation contains Angry Birds, Angry Birds Season, and Angry Birds Rio. August 25th gives us the retail version of the previously DLC-only add-on New Super Luigi U for the Wii U. This retail version does not require New Super Mario Bros. U to play and is a completely standalone version of the DLC. Finally, on August 29th, Pokemon Rumble U gets its debut on the Wii U. Local four-player co-op multiplayer returns in this new installation to the series, as well as the addition to use real-life figures to import new Pokémon into the game, a la Skylanders. Additionally, Pokémon Rumble U will include all 649 Pokémon from Gen 1 to Gen 5. Now onward to the Xbox 360 exclusives. Released on August 7th for the Xbox 360, but coming to the PS3 and PC sometime later in the year, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons gives us a quirky tale about an older brother and younger brother on an adventure to find the water of life to cure their father. Though there are two playable characters in the game, there is no co-op, and one player must control both brothers at the same time, creating a unique experience. The grunge-style beat-em-up Charlie Murder appears on August 14th for the Xbox 360. With tons of character customization options, four-player co-op, crazy enemy designs, and loads of unique abilities, Charlie Murder will definitely be something you'll want to grab and play with your friends. 
And lastly, on August 21st, the 360 receives Flashback with a PS3 release later in the year. A remake of the 1992 game of the same name, with development headed up by the original team and assisted by Ubisoft, Flashback aims to capture the same style of the original with new style and improvements aplenty. Sony gives us some unique exclusive titles for the PS3 and Vita this month. The first of three games released on August 6th is Dragon's Crown for the PS3 and Vita. Developed by Vanillaware, creator of such amazing games as Odin Sphere and Muramasa, this 2D beat-em-up is full of their signature hand-drawn characters, animations, and backgrounds. With six playable characters, each with their own unique abilities and playstyles, you and three friends set off on an epic adventure nearly 12 years in the making. The second game released on August 6th is Tales of Zillia for the PS3. Taking the slightly revitalized battle system from Graces F and adding some additional tweaks gives Zillia a much more fast-paced fighting style. Time to save the world in another JRPG, folks! The final August 6th game is Ib and Ob for the PS3. Using gravity and teamwork, players must overcome a series of crazy platforming-based puzzles in this quirky title. On August 27th, we'll get the final Sony exclusive, the English version of Hatsune Miku Project Diva F for the PS3. A music game featuring the digital diva Hatsune Miku and many of the other Vocaloid characters, those looking for a well-balanced and highly addictive rhythm game will be very pleased with Project Diva F, be you a fan of Vocaloids or not. Now it's time to take a look at the PC exclusives for August. The first gives us Take On Mars, a game which allows you to explore the surface of Mars as a rover operator on the PC. Traversing the mysterious planet will allow you to see Mars in a new way and even unlock the planet's hidden past. Real-time strategy game enthusiasts rejoice as on August 6th, Divinity Dragon Commander for the PC and Mac is released. The difference between Dragon Commander and other RTS games is if all else fails, you can turn the tide of battle by turning into a giant dragon and laying waste by burning down the competition. On August 13th, for PC, Mac, and Linux, Europa Universalist 4 gets released. Pick a date between 1444 and 1821, pick a country, and begin shaping the world in your image in one of the most customizable grand strategy sims. Due to fan support and a massive Kickstarter campaign, Skullgirls will be making its PC debut on August 22nd. Fully supported by the fans, this PC version will have fixes and new characters aplenty within the coming months. 2010's Castlevania Lords of Shadow is released on the PC in an Ultimate Edition bundle on August 27th. Included in this Ultimate Edition are new weapons, bosses, and environments, along with all the DLC content from the console versions. On August 30th, War for the Overworld for PC, Mac, and Linux wraps up our PC releases. Players are given the ability to dig, build, and set traps to create a deadly dungeon aimed at killing all heroes who dare enter. Being bad never felt so good. Let's wrap up August by taking a look at the major DLC releases. PS3 and PC players will be able to get their hands on the Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Vengeance DLC on August 1st. The DLC includes the new maps Cove, Rush, Uplink, and Detour, along with the new Buried Zombies map, and of course, the Raygun Mark II. The final DLC for Dishonored, The Bridgemore Witches, releases on August 13th for the 360, PS3, and PC. Players who have finished the Knife of Dunwall will be able to carry over their existing powers and weapons into this campaign as Bridgemore Witches picks up where Dunwall left off and finishes the story. Last but not least, Neverwinter Fury of the Feywild lets PC players experience a brand new zone, dungeons, professions, and a revamped campaign system on August 22nd. Best part? It's free! That takes care of all of August's major gaming releases, but don't get too relaxed, next month we'll have even more amazing games, so I'll see you then for more!